The normal probability distribution shows up in a lot of places in our everyday life. And to be able to get prepared to use the normal distribution in our inferential statistics that we'll do soon, it's important to be able to understand how we can get probabilities that are associated with values that are taken from a normally distributed population. And look at, if we selected an item at random, what's the probability that it would be either bigger than a value, smaller than a value, or between two values within that group that you pulled that item from. Now, when we have our original setup that we have our random variable is normally distributed with a mean of 32 and a standard deviation of 0.6, and they want us to find these probabilities, we can actually find them in a couple different ways. One way we could do it is to go to our Z scores, our standardized scores, and then look up our probabilities on a table. And we have our probabilities for the standardized scores on tables that are usually attached in the back of your textbook and through there. The other way we could find these probabilities is to use a graphing calculator or a statistical software package. Here I'm going to tell you what the keys would be and the syntax for entering these into your calculators for using a TI-83, TI-83+, TI-84, any of that particular model of a calculator. So when we're saying that we want to assume that X is normally distributed with a mean of 32 and a standard deviation of 0.6, we can first think of what our sketch of our region would be that they want us to find for this probability. So remember, a normal distribution is bell-shaped. It has its highest point over the mean of the population. And it has a horizontal axis that's a horizontal asymptote. So the curve gets closer and closer to it as its end behavior, but it doesn't ever touch it or cross over. And it has transition points at plus or minus one standard deviation away from the mean. That's where the curvature changes um, from concave down to concave up or vice versa. And also, it's perfectly symmetrical about the vertical line that goes through the mean. So that is inherent in the setup of the question that says it's normally distributed. Now, our mean is 32. So if we use our raw score values for this, we have our 32 in um, the very center of the distribution. And this bottom line is a number line. So as you go to the right, the numbers get bigger, and as you go to the left, the numbers get smaller. And in fact, our 0.6 being our standard deviation helps us even envision the values as we go. So our transition point that's one standard deviation above the mean would be a 32 plus a 0.6, so we have our 32.6 would be sitting there. If I added another standard deviation, I would have 32.6 plus 0.6 would be 33.2 for your second standard deviation. Now if I subtract the 0.6, I have 32 subtract 0.6 is 31.4. And 31.4 subtract 0.6 is 30.8. So it helps me give the values where I have my ordinary values for my population. If I picked a value from random out of the population, the majority of my values would be within these numbers. And then my unusual values would be either above two standard deviations above the mean or two standard deviations, more than two standard deviations below the mean. So that kind of gives me an estimate. Now, we're looking at all the probability that if I picked a value at random, I would get a value whose number is 31 point, is greater than 31.4. So 31.4 is actually one of these that I marked. So I think, okay, that's my cutoff. And the numbers that are bigger than that would be the numbers that are off to the right of that, forever right. It doesn't tell me to stop anywhere. Now, to find this probability, I actually want to do a vertical line at that cutoff and shade my normal curve over where that number line is, where I've highlighted the values that we're interested in. And this area under the curve is actually the same value that I'm looking for in terms of my probability. Now, 
our probability has a total value of 1. So there's a total value of 1 under the curve. And that's how we can manipulate things off of our table that they give us in our book in order to figure out this value that we're interested in. In a calculator, if you look over by where the clear button is, right to the left of that is a VARS, and then on the board above it is DIST for distribution. So if you go second distribution, and under that you'll see a key that's normal CDF. And that's the key that will help us find the numerical value for this probability. Now the normal CDF, it wants the low of number of the ones that you're interested in, comma, the high number that you're interested in, comma, the mean of the distribution, comma, the standard deviation of the distribution. So for this particular problem, we would key in normal CDF of, on my number line, the lowest value is the 31.4, comma, the highest forever up, so we'll just go 9999, comma, the mean of our distribution is 32, comma, and the standard deviation of our distribution is 0.6, and when you put that in and you push enter, you should see a probability of approximately 0.841. So this answer is 0 0.841. And it makes sense even when you look at the curve. We see that if the whole value underneath this is 1, and it's perfect symmetry on either side of the vertical line that goes to the mean, and my values start before the mean and go forever right, I would have more than half the curve. So I know my value's got to be bigger than 0.5, and we got our 0.841. Okay, let's draw the sketch for the next one and find its value. So we have our normal curve. I have my mean of 32. And I'm not going to draw in all the numbers. I'm going to kind of eyeball it from what I had before in order to do this reference number. So 33.2 is bigger than the mean of 32. So I know I want to start right of the highest point. And the 33.2 is about right there, and I want the values that are less than or equal to that. So we're going to shade from that cutoff forever left. We have a vertical line at the place where that cutoff is, and we shade under the curve over that interval that we're interested in. And now we see that when we key this into normal CDF, our low is negative 999, comma, our high is the 33.2. Our mean is 32, and our standard deviation is 0.6, and we get a probability of about 0.977. So a probability of picking a value at random out of that um, distribution that my value picked at random would be are um, less than or equal to 33.2 is a probability of 0.977. Or I could say 97.7% of that distribution has a value that's less than or equal to 33.2. Now the last one, we're going to draw, again, our normal curve. 32.4 is bigger than 32. So I'm going to go right of the highest point a little bit to do my 32.4. And 34.2 is even bigger than that. So we'll go further out for the 34.2. And I want the probability that a value picked at random would be between those values. So between these values and shade. So I'm anticipating a value that's um, smaller than 0.5 because it's less than half the curve that's shaded for that. Let's check it out. We have normal CDF of my low number on this span is 32.4, comma, high number is 34.2, comma, the mean is 32, 
and the standard deviation is 0 0.6. So when we key that through, we get a probability that is about 0.252. And that's a way that you can use your graphing calculator to find the areas under the normal curve for a particular distribution, and those areas correspond to the same value that we get for the answers to our probability, our corresponding probability questions.